Hello, I'm Eleanor Morton and this story is called A Cold Winter's Night. Toad Hall was illuminated with lights in the icy winter darkness. Around the fire of the Great Hall sat the four friends, reminiscing about their adventures together. That time they got the weasels out of Toad Hall, that time the weasels were overrunning the woods, and that time the weasels were dicks. Theirs was the strongest of bonds, Mole, Ratty, Badger and Toad. But even the strongest of bonds are broken by the needs of sleep, and as the evening wore on, it soon became time to retire to their own cosy beds. Good night, you chaps, said Ratty, perching his cap atop his head and wrapping his scarf tightly around himself. Yes, I should get back to the woods now before it gets too late, said Badger, fetching his walking stick from the stand in the hall. As the huge oak doors open, a great blust of snow blew through the room, covering the friends in icy snowflakes. Mole spluttered as a few flakes landed on his nose, and Toad smiled at the sight of his friend, desperately trying to lick the flakes away discreetly. Ratty and Badger said their farewells and departed. Heading home to a mole, said the Toad, putting his feet up on a puff, it's a type of stool, and puffing away on a cigar. Mole did not move. Actually, Toad, I was rather hoping I could stay the night. Toad was unfazed. Of course, the blizzard is far too thick for a little thing like you to venture out in. You can take any of the rooms you like. I have a dozen to spare. He nestled further into the leather crevices of the chair. Mole approached, timid, yet absolutely certain of himself. We live very different lives, don't we, Toad? Me in my little hole, my own little home in the ground, and you here in this great place. It must be rather lonely sometimes. Oh, well, I suppose it can be. Toad said, considering it properly for the first time. Mole watched his friend's beautiful green face as he thought. It doesn't have to be. Lonely, I mean, Mole said, putting one gentle paw onto Toad's knee. Their eyes met over the flickering fire. Toad pulled away. But w would anyone really want a creature like me? Toad asked. The walking definition of privilege. A, a toad so rich he could buy a dozen boats and then a, a dozen cars and then in some adaptations a dozen aeroplanes, all at a moment's notice. I am dripping with privilege. I disgust myself. And he burst into noisy sobs, throwing himself into the arm of the chair. Mole rejoined passionately. I never cared a jot for such things. Maybe you think me awfully common, but all I see when I look at you is not your riches or your house. All I see is a big green toad in Edwardian clothes. And I'm sure when you look at me, all you see is a common mole. But I'm a common mole who loves a wealthy toad. And I always have. Oh, mole, cried toad, and they flung themselves into a passionate embrace. And even though Mole was only a simple Mole who didn't seem to have a job, but did own a stepladder, and even though Toad was the worst kind of upper-class Toad, uh, somehow that didn't matter anymore. They were just two common British woodland and hedgerow animals bound by desire. And suddenly, it wasn't such a cold night after all. Thank you.